My name is Russell Hill. I was born in Fayetteville, Arkansas at the old Washington Regional on, the, on North Street in uh, 1972. My dad, Jack Hill, uh, was born uh, in Fayetteville and lived in uh, off of Double Springs Road, off of uh, Washington, or near Double Springs, off Weddington Road. Um, actually purchased the land from his granddad, or from his dad, who purchased it from his granddad. And so he's built a house basically in the backyard that he grew up in, and he lives there today. Uh, my mom was originally, uh, her name is Sherry Howell, and she was uh, born in Dayton, Ohio. And she moved here when she was 12 years old, and they lived, is my grandma Rose, and they lived on um, Woolsey. Uh, they lived in a house on Woolsey, and my parents, uh, I guess, met in high school, married when she was 18, and he was 20. I'm the first, I was their firstborn child, and uh, I was, again, born and raised here. Kind of grew up all over in Washington County. Went to three different junior highs, all in Washington County, and three different high schools. So what kind of business was your family in and what was your part of the business? Okay. Uh, well, my dad uh, grew up uh, starting working for uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And so there's not a Kentucky Fried Chicken in this area that he did not open that store. He started at 18 years old, worked there for 42 years. Uh, Mom worked a different variety of jobs, uh, but uh, I remember as a child she worked at American Air Filter in a factory. So dad was in fast food and mom worked in a factory. Uh, what jobs did you work during high school and after you got out of school? Okay, uh, my very first job was uh, working at Kentucky Fried Chicken for my dad on uh, North College, just a quarter of a mile from the the courthouse, it's now a Thai food restaurant place now, but that can take fried chicken. Uh, went into the Navy, uh, was in the Navy. When I got out of the Navy, I got a job in construction. Uh, worked with a, with a guy who's just a small business owner. We eventually became partners uh, and then started doing metal roofing. And then we became business partners together and uh, put on a lot of metal roofs here in Washington and Benton County. Then uh, was called into ministry and was a pastor for 14 years full-time and then um, eventually got out of ministry after 14 years uh, a cousin of mine um, bought a trucking company and started kind of a family trucking business and so i thought that would be interesting to work with with a lot of my family and so we got into that and then eventually i, I uh, broke out on my own and started my own freight brokerage company which uh, my wife runs that today uh, I. I did that from 2010 until 2015 when I was elected into office. Uh, talk about your decision to run. What made you decide to run for assessor and uh, what was it like to run? Well, I had spent most of my time uh, growing up, most of my professional life was in serving people. And, I, and it was more about this is just what I love to do. I love to help people and I love to serve, whether that was my country through the, the Navy or my community through the church or, uh, or my county as, as a county elected official. I, I really wanted to, with the freight brokerage company, it was more about just making money, even though I enjoyed working with my family and, and building the business. Um, I really missed that making a difference in my community. And so a friend asked me to you know, think about running for office. And then uh, a man, Jim Wilson, with the Washington County Republican Committee called me up and said, we have an open seat for the assessor's office and uh, we think you'd be a great candidate. Would you consider running for it? Uh, I knew it was a very big job. I said, ah, give, me, give me a couple weeks. Let me talk to some people. Let me pray about it. Let me think about it. That's, you know, this is, that's, a, that's a pretty big job. Uh, he contacted me two weeks later. I said, give me one more day talked to a few more people, and I said, uh, okay, let's do this. Let's see what happens. And then I had an opponent who was going to run for that office as well, and he was going to run because he wanted to abolish the office. So uh, he, his words were, I want to use the office of the assessor as a bully pulpit to convince the legislature to rewrite the Constitution and do away with property taxes. So quickly it came to me, and it, it was either he or I 
that we're going to win this office because we were the only two in the race. And so it turned real quickly from answering a phone call to, I feel, answering a calling. I needed to win this because uh, even the Gazette, when they interviewed him, said it would be bad if this guy won this office. Um, so it really turned into a calling to, you know, uh, save the county that I grew up and love. So who was your opponent and what was his background? Uh, his name was uh, Joshua Crawford. And this was in the uh, 2014 race. Uh, he w actually worked for the county in the IT department. And that's about all, all about all that I know about him. But it was a Republican primary? It was a primary, yeah. It was a primary race. Uh, there was no Democrat that that ran, so whoever won in May was going to be the, the new assessor come January. Uh, do you find the office or the atmosphere of running it to be partisan? And if As far as the office goes, uh, it's not a, a, I don't feel that it's a partisan uh, type environment here that you would maybe have down in Little Rock or definitely not in D.C. Uh, the people here, uh, it's more about where do you stand on the issues, and really not even that, it's more about just doing your job. Uh, even working with assessors across the state, I couldn't tell you what party they belong to. Uh, it's more of us, it's, it's about uh, the best practices and techniques for running our office as an assessor for the state of Arkansas. Talk about what, what was the office like when you came in, and what were your challenges you faced coming in, and then what have you done to try to meet them? Okay. Well, coming into the office, uh, I felt like I really inherited a, a very good office. We had a lot of people here with a tremendous amount of experience and really uh, were some of the leaders across the state and what they did. And so I really walked into a, what I felt like was a very good situation as far as people knowing their job and what to do. Um, coming in, though, I've always been a person of kind of like we need a mission statement, uh, we need a motto, we need core values, and so that wasn't here. And so when I came in, when I was first elected in January 2nd of 2015, I remember after swearing in, I walked in, closed the door, and I go, Lord, what did I get myself into? <laughs> this, uh, you know, here we go, because um, I, I didn't, I had no background in assessing whatsoever. Uh, but the one thing I did know is I know how to lead people and I know how to encourage and inspire and equip. And so that's what I began to do. I looked at the things because we had, have a lot of capable people that know their job better than I do. Uh, so I had to look around and go, okay, what are the things that only I can do? And I sought out to do that. And so I developed a mission statement. Uh, I developed uh, four core values for the office and I developed our motto. Uh, which kind of tells who we are and what we're about. And then I began just constantly keeping that in front of our people and uh, encouraging them to, you know, uh, make yourself a little better, do a little better, try to, try to uh, you know, take what you're doing now and move it to the next level. And our people have responded to that. What are the four? Give me, the four core values? Four. Yeah, well, one of the things that we do is we are mandated by the state of Arkansas to be the official mappers of all the parcel boundaries in the county. And so I wanted to create an easy way to remember our four core values, and so we use a compass. Our true north is um, nonpartisan, and that's what we call our fair and equitable piece. In the assessing world, the golden rule is to treat everybody fair and equal. And so a good word for that is nonpartisan, to treat everybody uh, fair and equal away from any sort of a bias. Uh, and then if you went uh, to the South, S stands for uh, service. I don't think there's an office in Washington County that does more customer service on a daily basis than the assessor's office. Uh, whether it's online, over the phone, or in person, uh, we will service over a thousand people a day. Uh, in the assessor's office with their personal property assessments, business assessments, or real estate. So customer service was a, a big driving force with us. And we've always, uh, I inherited a really good group of people that, and we, we look at our folks as customers when they come in. And we really, because there's, there's such a bad um, image out there with government serving the taxpayers. And so we really, in this office, we strive very hard to change that uh, uh, perception that the public has. 
so if you go over to east or the letter E is exact, uh, we take in a lot of data. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of data, every make, model, vehicle, uh, all the different taxing districts, the values, everything about every property and characteristic and improvement uh, out of the 95,000 parcels that we have. So we have a tremendous amount of data. So we need to make sure that the data that we're putting in is exact to the best of our ability. We know it's not perfect, but we want to be as close as possible to determining the correct market values and making sure that we have all of the information correct in our data system. The toughest one, the last one to come up was West, the W, uh, and uh, we needed an education piece. And uh, so W stands for wis wisdom, and that's pairing experience and education. And then wisdom is kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, we want to make sure that we have people who are trained in what they do. A lot of stuff that we do specialized, and so we want to make sure they have the proper training, education, and certification in the field of what they do. But then also, too, we've, we're mandated by the state to educate the public about the different laws affecting them and the property owners and their bill of rights and um, things of that nature. So we do a lot of public speaking events. Uh, we, we, we have a couple of uh, um, training classes that we do with real estate uh, companies and we'll go in and actually train their realtors on how to look at our property search site and what the different codes are for the different uh, properties and how we code them and how we value them. Um, your mission statement, what is it? It is uh, really what we do. Oh, my, the mission statement that we came up with, that's what I started with. And it's really uh, involved in what we do. It's, it's, it's a little bit long. I like to keep things short and sweet and, and easy to remember. But our mission statement is uh, to discover, list, and value all of the property in Washington County with the utmost accuracy and integrity while developing a well-trained staff to better serve you our customer. So that's our mission statement. And then our motto, uh, which I put it on our cards, it's on my email. I try to get that out because I go to a lot of uh, public events to talk with folks and, and a lot of people don't even know what the assessor does. And so I tried to phrase it in the, a precise little sentence and, it, and our motto is uh, valuing Washington County and you. So that's our motto. What's something that a lot of people don't know about the assessor's office, or maybe they get confused about it? Uh, I do not. Oh, uh, one of the biggest misconceptions with the assessor's office is um, you do not write me a check. We do not collect property taxes. Uh, most people I meet when they find out, oh, you're the assessor. Oh, I wrote you a check. I was like, mm, I didn't get it. I hope you didn't write it to me. You need to write that to the collector uh, because we don't collect it uh, and you don't write those checks out to us. Talk about how the three work together, the assessor, the collector, and then the treasurer. If okay. Uh, with the county, and it's really nice that uh, we're kind of all in the office together because we do work together quite a bit. Uh, even though our offices are separate, we each uh, kind of have a certain step in the process as far as I'm the first step of the process in the assessment. Uh, we have to go out, we have to discover the property. We have to list it with the right, in the right taxing district with the person who is most likely the property owner. They're the ones responsible for paying the property taxes. So we have to discover it, find the person responsible for the taxes and make sure it's listed in the right taxing district. And then we put the value, we put the market value on the property. Um, the assessed value is 20% and that is uh, determined by the legislator. Legislature has come up with that and it's been 20% for forever, I guess. Um, so once we have uh, found the property, found the person responsible for the taxes and put it in the right taxing district, we take that information and we give it to the collector. Then it's the collector's job to determine the market value uh, that we put on it, the assessed value or what we call taxable value, um, multiply it by the taxing district, the millage rate that it is, and then that, that becomes that person's property taxes and then they send them a bill. And so once they give that person the bill then uh, and pay the collector, the collector then hands it over to the treasurer and then the treasurer uh, disperses it to the different uh, taxing entities. 
What else about the office? I mean, when you're going out there speaking to these groups, what are some of the messages that you pitch? Uh, well, a lot of what we do when we go out into the public, uh, there's, you know, and we're talking to people and educating them about what we do. Uh, one of the biggest things that we talk about, especially uh, from January to May, the state requires that you assess your personal and business personal property each year between January 1st to May 31st to avoid a 10% late penalty. And that's regardless of when your tags expire. Uh, so you want to make sure that you, you can either call us, email us, uh, go online, or come in person. Uh, so we've worked, uh, we've actually worked a lot with the state and the Department of Motor Vehicles to try to streamline and decrease, decrease the amount of foot traffic that people have to go into the DMV. So now you can get your tags renewed online or through the mail. And so we were the first county in the state to do online assessments. Uh, for personal and business personal property or business business personal property as well uh, so people don't have to uh, come and visit our office they can do it right from the telephone or they can um, uh, do it online I'd say another thing that we also do as well to try to educate people when I'm out there in the public is about Amendment 79 which is often referred to as the homestead te uh, tax credit the homestead credit uh, where now they just the legislature just raised it uh, from uh, 350 to 375 dollars, and we try to with every deed tra transaction that comes through, we look and see if it would qualify uh, as for a homestead credit, and then we contact those property owners and make sure that they uh, are claiming that credit and, and getting that credit that they get once they're and once they claim it. Uh, as long as they're the owners of that property, they'll they'll get it every year. Well, the purchase of the new vehicle is that the only time that you really have to go in in person to for the assessor's office? Yeah, that very first time. Or if you're brand okay. Uh, one thing that we're working on that we haven't figured out yet is when a person purchases a vehicle uh, for the first time, uh, or if they just moved into the county, we do require them to come to one of our four offices that we have throughout uh, Washington County in person. Namely, because we need to get some get some documentation and also get their signature on file. Talk about the, the when you came here. You, you mentioned your staff that. Uh, talk about uh, how, what kind of a job you think they do here with the public. Okay. Uh, well, coming into the office, I talked. I uh, mentioned that we have a great team of people here that are very knowledgeable in what they do, and and also uh, are really geared towards customer service. Uh, there's not a week that uh, doesn't go by that I don't get an email or a phone call or somebody walking into my office to compliment. Uh, the people that that helped serve them that day and even made their day brighter and uh, and so that's always great to hear and then uh, I make sure that I share that with the rest of the people in our office because those are the things that we value and uh, when you put value on it then it becomes important to them and uh, we see the difference in that uh, but also too we have people that uh, I have several people that work here uh, William Stevenson comes to mind with real estate Williams my if you've got a problem or an issue that's uh, very difficult I, I send people to William he has over 20 years experience here and uh, there's not anything that this guy can't figure out and then I have uh, Lee Rochester another person who's uh, over my uh, she's my chief deputy of personal property and uh, she's someone that I can always depend on and rely on and she has all too also has over 20 years of experience in this assessor's office and then uh, of course my chief deputy Dan Seipert uh, has over 20 years in the assessment world as well and uh, is, an, uh, is a fantastic manager he was a great addition I actually hired him just uh, two years ago from uh, from the State Department the assessment Arkansas Assessment Coordination Department. They uh, audit all 75 counties in the assessor's offices and so uh, he was over the ratio studies and uh, he's just been an incredible manager of the people and he's uh, he's really been a great addition to this office. I'm really glad to have him. Uh, what about the other officials in the county that you work with? I know you all have county department head meetings and stuff. Talk about your team here and how y'all work together if you do. It's been a pleasure working with the uh, other elected officials in Washington County. Uh, we have a monthly breakfast 
that we meet regularly. And then uh, from time to time, we go to lunch together, just kind of, there's nothing really scheduled. It's somewhat impromptu. And of course, there are a lot of different, um, uh, either a retirement or an award ceremony or uh, something new or a quorum court. There's, there's always something going on that uh, we were all working together. And the great thing is, is we all uh, love and care about our county um, and want and, and have the best interest of the county uh, put first. So that, that makes it a great working environment to work with these folks, uh, all the different elected officials, and, uh, and they all do a great job at what they do. Uh, what about some of the, your predecessors here in the office? How, what kind of jobs have they done over the years? Well, you have Sue Phillips comes to mind first. Sue is a legend. Uh, she still, we still probably, uh, there's some of us that, there's a lot of people that worked in the office under Sue. And, uh, and they still love her dearly. And uh, about once a quarter, we go and we have lunch at the Catfish Hole. And that's where she likes to go. And so that's what we'll go. And we'll just uh, uh, keep in touch with her. We do a Christmas party every year. And uh, Sue comes to it every year, comes to our employee Christmas party. Uh, so Sue, um, was just a great people person and um, she was uh, a no-nonsense type lady and uh, she ran this office uh, the way that she saw best and saw fit and uh, and she really had a way of um, getting her people to fall in step with what she did so I've been very impressed uh, with Sue and getting to know her over the years. Then uh, after Sue was Leanne Kazar. Leanne's the one now when Sue was here the, the assessor's office was still uh, doing property record cards and filing cabinets. Nothing was computerized or digitized and so we had an entire two walls just just six foot tall filing cabinets just stacked up with all these uh, property records uh, about these uh, you know in these filing cabinets and you'd have title companies in here all the time realtors uh, people looking up different information going through these filing cabinets which is think about it now how scary that would be that it hopefully got put back in the right place and this was before my day but I've heard about those days uh, when Leanne who was uh, Sue's chief deputy uh, she was she uh, preceded Sue and Leanne was the one uh, she was uh, she's very high-tech uh, very computer savvy and so she went in and that's when all the records be started to become digitized and they started getting rid of the filing cabinets and putting all of the data into uh, computer systems and then after Leanne was Jeff Williams. Uh, Jeff, I think probably uh, he really pushed uh, the team in the office to uh, just focus on some better practices and standards of doing things. Uh, and then he was also really good about being out there in the public and doing public relations and really giving exposure to the office. So what I've done is I've taken a little bit that I've learned from their history and watching them and I've tried to apply it by pushing our technology uh, to, to new higher levels as, as technology continues to grow and then also I've uh, amped up our public relations area. I'm a diplomat for the uh, Springdale Chamber and Fayetteville Chamber in the county and I go to a lot of those uh, ribbon cuttings, ground breakings. I was at the Morning Brew this morning. Uh, I was at a ribbon cutting yesterday and so I try to get out there into the public. We started, uh, as I mentioned earlier, working with realtors and title companies, uh, opening our office up to them. Uh, we have a booth. Uh, next week starts the Education Expos, and so we've had a booth there. I think this will be our fourth year uh, where we show our appreciation to the teachers, and then also we uh, pass out a lot of information about our office. So it's a great op opportunity for us to educate our educators and also live on them. What else that maybe I haven't thought to ask about? I've, we've covered a lot. Well, that. we're... We, uh, you know, like I said, I, uh, some of the things that uh, maybe some people might not know about, uh, but I'm four, just a little bit over four and a half years in, and we've been recognized uh, 10 times across the state and across the nation. Uh, so we've, uh, with some of the stuff that we've done, we're either the first in the state to do it or we're the only ones currently in the state with some of the projects and the things that we do to help better serve uh, the people in Washington County. 
for example? Uh, example one of the uh, popular things that we did was our property search site. Uh, we were uh, we used to update, say on a daily basis, we'll have anywhere from 25 to 50 deeds that come through our office where property was bought and sold. And then we'll have anywhere from a thousand to two thousand personal property records that change on a daily basis and so you can access all that information on our public search site on our property search site and at the time it was being updated once a week well i wanted us to move at the speed of business and the realtors and the title companies and people that are looking to invest in washington county uh, i wanted them to have the information as soon as possible and not have to wait a week and go realize oh you know because it can be out of date when you have 50 parcels on average running through your office on a daily basis uh, someone could have some misinformation and so uh, we are the we were the first county I think we're still the only county in the state that we update our property records daily so at 6 p.m. Uh, we update all the changes that took place from 7 a.m. in the morning till 5 p.m. that evening uh, and so by 6 o'clock everything's updated for all the changes that that we made that day uh, what about your popular property search link where you can just pull right up and click and you get the map and the deeds and all that stuff? Talk about that. Uh, one of the features that people love most is our property search site. Uh, being able to, to access that and you go into a search engine and you can either look it up by last name, first name. I mean, you put in that last name, it's going to give you every last name. Or, or that last name is going to pull up every person that has that last name in Washington County and all the information that they have about each parcel assigned to that last name. You can look it up by parcel number, uh, street address, city, and then when you get into into that, uh, it can you can click on a button called Map It, and it'll take you right to that parcel. And one of the things that we do too is we we do imagery. Uh, we, we fly the entire county and we update our imagery every year. The flights usually take place in December, run through January, sometimes February. It all depends on the weather. Uh, but we like to do that when there's no foliage on the trees so we can get outlines of each of the properties and the houses and get a better look at it. And uh, so we take that imagery and then, then we start mapping the parcel boundaries according to the deed on that. And then, But you can look on there, you can look where your property is, you can see the square footage, the age, the quality, condition, the grade, the remaining economic life, how many bedrooms, bathrooms uh, are in there, if it's an open porch, sidewalks, uh, outbuildings, uh, everything that you want to know about that property uh, is right there. Uh, and the people that utilize the, that website the most are insurance companies, realtors, title companies, and banks. They're all looking for information on that property uh, for whatever type of business they're doing. And so that's why we take a, a, it's a high priority for our office to make sure that that information is correct and we have it accessible and up to date as soon as possible because we know uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, different people, business people, and uh, uh, are there, can have access to it so they can serve their clients here in Washington County. One of my favorite things to read every week is in the Democrat Gazette, they have all the property sales. Yes. Uh, do they, is that generated from a search on your website? Yes, uh, they generate that. Yeah. yeah, each week uh, they'll, usually in the Sunday paper, uh, they'll have the list of property sales and so I'm not sure who does that but they run a report of and they probably get that information I would think maybe from the circuit clerk's office because you have to file that deed in the circuit clerk's office so that's where it starts is whenever a property changes hands it first goes to the circuit clerk it gets filed there once the circuit clerk has filed it then that deed comes to our office where we then look at the legal description and we map it out and then we change over the ownership if there's anything that changed with the property and then we also do research on it is finding out is it an arm's length transaction what did it sell for what were the conditions of that that helps us keep our pulse on um, what the market is doing so we can be more accurate when we're determining the market values on these properties. 
So, for example, if a father sold his son something really cheap, he might not count that as a... We would have to throw that out. Um, and, oh, yeah. So, so for example, when I say arm's length transaction, say a father sells has a property and he sells it to his son. Uh, we want to know the conditions of that sale. Uh, was it exposed to the open market? Meaning, did other people have an opportunity to bid on that? Uh, if we saw something on a deed there and it looked like a father selling to his son, we would have to uh, now it would, it would still we would have it on record and everything and we would have exactly what it sold for and when the date and everything but when it comes to determining uh, when we run our ratio studies to see how close we are to market value that would be one that we would have to throw out that sale and not consider it uh, when we're determining the market value. If you met somebody from another part of the state maybe or another part of the country and they said uh, Russell, tell me about Washington County. What's the county like to live in? What would you tell them? Uh, well, when I meet people from across the state or, or even across a different country, uh, you know, like Arkansas, what, what state is that in? Or, you know, or I tell them I'm from Washington County in Fayetteville. Uh, well, I know one thing, all the other assessors across the state in Arkansas uh, envy us. Um, they, they know this is, they call it the promised land up here. Uh, but uh, for me, when I'm talking to people about my county, uh, where I was born and raised, I feel very blessed uh, to have been able to grow up in such a wonderful place. Uh, first of all, you, you uh, see the natural beauty of where we live, uh, you know, just here uh, with all the rolling hills and the beautiful greenery. And, but then, it's, uh, even though we live in a beautiful area, uh, the people are what make it great. Uh, the people here are just so kind and considerate and willing to help each other. There's uh, everybody's. There's so many events that take place. Now that was one of the things growing up as there as a kid here. Uh, gosh, I remember. I think Springdale was like twenty five thousand people, um, and there wasn't a, much to do. Uh, now with the growth that has taken place and kind of the secrets out of the bag at what a great place this is. There's so many things to do, and there are so many events that uh, the people here put on that are free or they're helping is a very philanthropical, philanthropical area here in Washington County. And so there's a great spirit of just uh, openness uh, and, and just helping your, your fellow brother. How would you complete this sentence? My favorite thing about Washington County is... My favorite thing about Washington County is the people. Um, there's, they come from so, and we're starting to see so many different walks of life and people moving here from all over the country and all over the world. And, uh, and they're calling it home because they feel so welcomed and loved. And we're, we're glad to welcome them in and make them a part of the family.